This is the CT scan for patient with bilateral pan sinusitis with involvement, gross involvement of the frontal sinuses and patchy involvement of the ethmoids as well as the sphenoid sinuses as you can see in this moving sections. The main complaints are nasal congestion and headache. Now if you see on these frontal section cuts, what you can see is that the frontal sinuses are very well pneumatized. There is a cell that pneumatizes inside the right side frontal sinus along with the suprabular cell. So that makes the anatomy of the frontal sinus in the recess slightly complicated because of the presence of these two cells. The shadow of the frontal bular cell uh, is, is very well visible here. The frontal bular cell is a cell that pneumatizes from the ethmoids inside the frontal sinus or recess, often mistaken as an isolated frontal cell. And here this is also the sphenoid sinusitis along with some maxillary sinusitis as well. The ethmoids are also involved in the sinusitis. There is the concha bullosa on the left side along with the mild deviated nasal septum on the right side. Here we focus more on the, uh, the frontal dissection. So uh, a broad ethmoidectomy and uh, uh, anterior posterior ethmoidectomy and a uh, bilateral maxillary entrostomy has already been done. Now what we can see is the frontal recess area, the leftover ethmoids and the buller cell entrance which we had discussed. So we'll take a shaver blade, this is the right side and we open the most anterior part of the ethmoid which is the cell above the, uh, the bulla sometimes, the supra buller cell which often uh, in one or more quantity can pneumatize inside the frontal sinus to create a frontal buller cell which often uh, is mistaken as a isolated frontal cell or a type 4 cell. So uh, the very important way of differentiating these cells is on the sagittal sections where one can clearly demarcate as to what kind of cells these are along with the axial cuts as well. Now we are just taking over some of the ethmoidal septations from the posterior and the anterior ethmoid while working our way from uh, posterior to anterior. Now posteriorly here there is the superior turbinate. As we go medial to the superior turbinate, we encounter the sphenoid sinus and the sphenoid ostium. The sphenoid sinus happens to be the lowest most point of skull base so it's very important to identify that. We showed that this is where this is our lowest boundary of working. As we dissect the inferior third or half of the, super, of the superior turbinate, depending on the extent of disease, to open the sphenoid sinus, <clears throat> we start getting a glimpse of the inside of the sphenoid sinus, like such. And uh, uh, depending on the thickness of this bone, of the anterior face of sphenoid, we, we may just require either a shaver blade to uh, open this completely or sometimes use a thick bone punch for this kind of work. Now we come back to our frontal recess area and we take down the posterior wall of the agar nasi followed by the septation from uh, at the uh, supra buller cell and we make a point to fracture these cells uh, from posterior to anterior to be very sure that our instrument does not have any possibility of hitting the uh, thin and fragile skull base at the cribriform plate in this region. Having a clear vision from the superior wall of the sphenoid from the plerum to the uh, <coughs> frontal recess is very important in maintaining an overall perception of the slanting skull base and uh, to not miss any cells in between. <coughs> Here we are just making an attempt to open the sphenoid widely, removing the excess redundant mucosa and some thin bony fragments. One can already start seeing the cellar bulge inside the sphenoid sinus and on the right side. And having, having done that and seen the level of the floor of the, the roof of sphenoid sinus, we again come back anteriorly uh, where you can see the lateral boundary as the lamina papracia and we start dissecting the cells one by one in an attempt to open the frontal recess and eventually the frontal sinus in this anatomy which we had discussed that hey, there is a, a single cell medially which pneumatizes inside the frontal sinus somewhat akin to an interfrontal sinus cell which is shifted more towards the right side and opens on the right side 
along with the presence of a frontal bullar cell, which is an anterior ethmoidal cell essentially, pneumatizing along the posterior wall of the frontal sinus. These bony septations between the ethmoids, now since we are working with the angled endoscope, can be broken down either using sharp true cuts or with the help of uh, microdebriders. And as we do that, we start seeing the wall of the skull base, the roof of the skull base, very, very clearly. Here we use a straight bone punch to resect some portion of the anterior wall of the agar nasi, just lateral to the axilla of the middle turbinate, while again maintaining caution not to fracture the axilla itself, because that would destabilize the middle turbinate and uh, lead to lateralization of this, and that would surely uh, in future block the frontal recess. As we remove the anterior wall of the agar nasi, we are able to achieve a more straight angulation of vision inside the, uh, the frontal recess. And now as we do so, we use our frontal sinus curette to gently palpate and insinuate our curette behind the thin bone of the uh, uh, cells of agar nasi and above this to fracture these cells anteriorly comfortably to have a good vision inside the frontal recess proper. Sometimes when there are no significant type uh, 2 or 3 coon cells and there is just the agar nasi and in this case on the right side a frontal bullar cell we may also end up removing some portion of the frontal bullar cell to help us gain an entry inside the frontal sinus proper. And like we had discussed there is one more cell medial to the medial inside the frontal sinus which is akin to the uh, interfrontal sinus cell which opens here and which would soon need to be uh, cleared as well. So, this is the, the medial cell, the interfrontal sinus cell, which we had discussed, which was shifted more on the right side in this patient. We can see here how the trajectory of the interfrontal sinus cell goes medially if we look at from the perspective of the, uh, the axilla of the middle turbinate, where the frontal sinus proper is, is oriented more laterally with this party wall between the, the two cells, which can be easily broken down using uh, a suction curette or a normal frontal sinus curette. However, one must avoid going too far posterior or towards the posterior wall of this, um, this cell because uh, that is attached to the, uh, the skull base at the level of the posterior wall of the frontal sinus. Hence, any attempt to remove portion of this party wall between the frontal sinus proper and the interfrontal sinus cell could be just done uh, anteriorly at the level of the anterior wall of frontal sinus because that is a safe region. Now we resort to using the uh, the angular or the angulated uh, articulated bone punch to remove some more of the anterior wall of the, uh, the frontal recess which is basically the frontal beak area which is a thick bone. Now, this is done so that our access and our vision inside the frontal sinus inside this party wall becomes much more clear and also because we understand that in the post-operative period, this area would again narrow down slightly. The more bone we removed, remove of this uh, thick frontal beak, the, the better would be our overall control in the post-operative period. And we can see that this, this wall goes, is attaching to the posterior wall of the agar nasi as it happens in the uh, frontal bullar cells. And any attempt could be done only towards the anterior wall of frontal sinus, not, not posteriorly. So some portion of the party wall which was fractured using a curette can now be removed gently using a um, giraffe forceps. As we see here, the, the giraffe forceps, the shaft is placed below the angled endoscope so that uh, the vision is not impaired and not above the endoscope. Now with this C, we, we were able to see that uh, the entire frontal sinus and this interfrontal sinus cell uh, has been uh, uh, clearly open widely uh, with no gross uh, bare bone anywhere for granulation formation. We can still make an attempt to see if some portion more anteriorly can be fractured using the curette, though um, uh, frankly uh, too much is not required because the access is, is, is pretty wide in, in this uh, instance.
So we use just some gentle pressure with the frontal sinus curette, working slightly uh, from posterior to anterior and medial to lateral. We do not wish to go from lateral to medial because then again that could injure the equilibrium plate. So we go from uh, medial to lateral in an attempt to uh, further remove that RT wall as much as possible. However, at, at present, this looks uh, quite okay. Now with the 70 degree endoscope, the vision is, is quite good. You can see some, some bit of this wall is left, how it attaches to the posterior wall of frontal sinus, which is in fact the uh, uh, anterior wall of the anterior fossa and uh, is, uh, must not be evulsed ever because that could lead to a fracture of this bone and could create a CSF leak, which would be very difficult to manage given this obtuse location. How our navigation suction tip is pointing inside the erstwhile interfrontal sinus uh, septal cell the lateral boundary of which is the bony septation that divides it from the frontal sinus proper. And now we take our na suction navigation inside the frontal sinus proper, which can see, be seen on the screen as the cursor that points in the frontal sinus in all three sections, just the coronal, the sagittal, and the axial cuts. So as we take the angled endoscope, the 70 degree scope, and see on the skull base, we can st start seeing the actual complete skull base proper from posterior to anterior including the ethmoidal vessels very, very clearly. One can see here the anti-ethmoidal artery and the anterior, uh, the, the entire skull base, how it slopes anteriorly from the uh, posterior wall of frontal sinus all the way back from the anterior and posterior ethmoids towards the uh, sphenoid sinus. This is a broad opening of the frontal sinus and uh, uh, gives you a lot of security in the post-operative period that this can be irrigated very well for it to heal. Uh, no bare bone has been created. Some small chips of bone can be cleared using forceps from this region. And behind this tip, you can you can have a, a clearly visualize the anterior ethmoidal artery. Now we go towards the, the left side, where again a broad anterior posterior ethmoidectomy and sphenoidotomy has been completed. This is sphenoid sinus on the left side. One can see the uh, lateral optical carotid recess and the pterygoid recess as well, with some pooling of blood. The leftward part of the cella is right in front, above which is the, uh, the posterior ethmoid cell. And then there are the open anterior ethmoidal uh, region, along with the uh, frontal recessed cells, which in this case, as we had seen in the CT, were a type 1 and 2 Kuhn cells. It was, I think, one or two cells above the agar nasi. Now, what we'll do is, once you have done the broad eth ethmoidectomy and the mana papyracea has been removed, has been uh, exposed, we use a, a cranial through cut to uh, clear uh, these leftover cell partitions in the anterior ethmoidal region to give us a broad vision inside the frontal recess in sinus proper. Now we repeat the same step on the left side where we clear the anterior wall of the agar nasi just lateral to the axil of the middle turbinate. And once again, this should be done uh, not to destabilize the middle turbinate and uh, not to evulse mucosa from the uh, anterior wall because then that would lead to exposure of bare bone. Now, as we remove the anterior wall, now we start seeing the orientation of cells, which is uh, basically uh, two cells above the agar nasi that form the uh, frontal recess proper. This is the cella, as we had seen earlier in the sphenoid sinus. We can see the posterior ethmoid above it and lateral to it. 
this is the uh, the posterior ethmoidal uh, skull base the fovea at the level of the posterior ethmoids and now we have certain septations that still exist uh, between the uh, anterior ethmoidal fovea as well as the frontal recess in sinus proper now we had seen that this is basically a type 2 configuration which has one or more cells above the agar nasi that form the uh, recess now as we take this navigation probe behind uh, the uh, tier of uh, frontal side frontal recess cells which is two cells above the agar nasi we can map this on the uh, navigation scan this is indeed so and our pointer points clearly towards these cells which are the cone type 2 cells which uh, form the frontal recess and now uh, the clear way to open the frontal sinus and the recess here would be to remove these cells one by one generally from posterior to anterior and from medial to lateral but once we have a clear orientation of how these cells exist and what is their relationship towards to the frontal ostium proper uh we would take uh, a frontal sinus curette and these come in various angles to start fracturing the uh, lowest most cell or the posterior most cell and then working from uh, low to high and from posterior to anterior one by one we're moving every cell as we go and not uh, bulldozing our way through because then that would lead to trauma and one would lose orientation so as we keep removing cells from posterior to anterior and medial to lateral we start seeing the frontal recess and the frontal sinus in a in a much better way now again the the amount of force here is very very guarded it is not too much if uh, one must not meet too much resistance because these are thin septations and one has to be very very guarded in terms of the pressure one applies to remove these bones so that not to cause any skull based trauma once these cells or the posterior boundary or the medial boundaries of these cells have been fractured and mobilized they could be removed using either uh, an upturned blexley or uh, if they if they go high up using a giraffe forceps so as we do so we we already start getting a vision inside the frontal sinus proper so we can see the frontal sinus already because of removal of these cells still uh, we would like to remove certain more because we want to make these the opening as broad as possible because then to irrigate uh, this in the post operative period for a long time and the wider the opening the better it is still and again at all times maintaining our stance not to cause any uh, gross mucosal trauma or avulsion now as we keep increasing this space anteriorly because we only have anteriorly to go posteriorly we can we cannot much we start seeing the bone uh, much better and this the lip here you see of the bone above superiorly is the frontal beak now this could be removed more using a articulated bone punch or a drill but uh, in this case it does not require it does not seem to be justified because already we have a very broad opening of the frontal sinus in front of us after removing of the uh, tier 2 cells the cone 2 cells in the uh, frontal sinus